All right. So, you know, one thing I don't like in our application is that first of all, we're hard coding the URL into our application. Uh, you never want to do that. Instead, what I would rather do is uh, have this URL stored as an environment variable. And so that way, you know, when we move to production, you know, there's nothing that we would need to change. We can just pull the environment variables that we set in, either in Docker Compose or on the host machine. So what I want to do is uh, within our base directory, I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call this config. And within here, I'm going to create a new file called config.js. So this is going to store basically a variable that holds all of our uh, environment variables. And so here, I'm just going to do a module.exports equals. And then here, I'm going to store all of our environment variables. So if we go back to our URL, um, there's a couple of things we need to pull out here. We need the username for our Mongo database, the password. Uh, we also need the uh, IP address. Uh, we know with Docker, we can always use Mongo. So, you know, whether you're in development or environment for the IP address, you can always use Mongo. So technically, we don't even need to save that as an environment variable. But, you know, down the road, uh, you know, you definitely want to think about the future. There may be a, a time where you decide that, you know what, I don't want to keep my database as a Docker container. Maybe you want to use some kind of managed service. So, so in that case, we can no longer use DNS because it's no longer going to be running as a container. So if you ever do decide to maybe move your Mongo database, to outside of the Docker world and then have it hosted by AWS or some, some other hosting platform or cloud platform, uh, then you would need to pass in a, uh, the IP address as an environment variable. So I like to just store everything as environment variables just so that we can plan for the future. So we need those three uh, and the port because who knows, right? The port could change in the future. So let's go back to our config.js and I'm going to define a property called uh, Mongo underscore IP. And then here, this is going to grab process.env.mongo underscore IP. So we're going to make sure that our Docker containers uh, pass this environment variable in. However, if it's not set, then we're going to default to Mongo, right? So that's what the, the double pipes mean. So if this is set, then we're going to use this value and Mongo IP is going to be stored to, uh, to the value of this environment variable. However, if this is not set, then this variable is going to be set to Mongo. Right? And so the reason I'm doing that is because, you know, we can always default to Mongo as our IP uh, if, if we don't pass anything in. And the next thing that I want to do is we'll grab the, the Mongo port. So I'll call this Mongo underscore port. And we'll say process.env.mongo underscore port. And then here, we're going to pass in uh, the default value of 27017. Uh, then we want the Mongo user. And we'll pass in the value uh, of Mon the environment variable of Mongo underscore user. And we don't need to default that. And then we need Mongo password. All right, so now just make sure that we're exporting it. And what I'm going to do is in our index.js uh, file, we can then import those environment variables. So here, this is what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a uh, to the template string. And then we can then grab those values. So here, this is going to be the username. So we'll just say Dolan. And then um, we're going to grab in mongo underscore user right and then make sure we let vs code import it or manually do it yourself then the password we want to do the same thing All right and then here we also want to pass in the ip address and then grab the port as well, All right? And make sure to let VS Code import all of these for you. And that should be about it. Um, technically, we could do the same thing right here for port. Um, I just like to kind of have a config file right here that holds all of my environment variables so I can know exactly where to look if I ever need to change anything. And it's just kind of nice to have all of these in a central location. But you know, this section, this part of the, the video, uh, completely optional. 
All right, let's save all, and then let's... Uh, so now that we saved it, let's uh, go do a Docker logs. And it looks like we got an error. So what happened here? It looks like we got an authentication failed, so we clearly messed something up. Let's just make sure we save this. And right, it's failing because, well, first of all, we haven't passed in any of these uh, environment variables. So uh, we don't have a user or a password right now. So we have to pass that into Docker Compose. Okay, and so here right now we've been using the base Docker Compose file for everything. Uh, and that's just because I just wanted to start off with something simple. But uh, I think it's time we started kind of splitting things up between our dev and prod for Mongo. So right now we're just working on our dev environment. So let's uh, copy all of the Mongo related stuff that's for our dev environment and move it into the dev.yaml so that we're not cluttering up the shared configs. So for the environment variables, let's copy those. Actually, I can copy all of this for now and go into our dev. And then here, uh, we can remove image because that's not going to change whether it's production or development. We'll set these environment variables. Uh, and then we also need to set the new ones as well. So what is this? Mongo underscore, um, Mongo underscore user. This is going to equal the same thing as this in this case. And actually, I'm making a mistake. So this is going to go under our node app, right? This is an environment variable for our node application. We'll set that to Sanjeev. And then here, we'll set this uh, Mongo password equal to my password. And that's all we should need um, because the rest uh, can default to what we're already using. So we don't need to pass those in. And then now I think we should still be tailing this. And we actually have to rebuild the containers because we passed the new environment variable. So let's stop this. And we're going to have to do a Docker compose down. And let's bring it back up. And I realized it connected to the wrong container. We want our node application. All right, perfect. So now we can see we've successfully connected to the database. Uh, and once again, guys, this part of the video was purely optional, but I just kind of like having everything in a centralized location. And I just want to make sure that we kind of think about what our application is going to look like in the future and make sure that we can handle making any changes to where our Mongo database is actually stored. All right, if we take a look at the logs right here, you'll notice that we've got a couple of uh, warning messages. So to clean up these Mongo warning messages, as well as maybe kind of clean up our index.js file, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually store our URL into a variable. And so here I'm going to do const and then we'll call this Mongo URL. And I'm just going to store this URL up here. And then, then in the connect method, I can just call Mongo URL. Then to get rid of those warning messages, uh, I'm going to pass in a few properties. Uh, don't worry too much about these. I'm just, it's not really going to affect the functionality of our application. It's just going to make sure that we don't see those annoying warnings. All right, and so that's all the changes I wanted to make in this case. I just wanted to clean it up just a little bit. So let's save that. Let's make sure that we've successfully connected and we should be good to go.